Hi, this is Sensei Jillian here from Code Ninjas, and today we're going over how to use cloning in your Scratch games. Now on my Apple Sprite, I'll drag out the When Flag Clicked block, and then in the Control section, I'm dragging out the Create Clone of Myself block. Now when I click the green flag, hmm, I don't see any clone. This is because the clone appears right in front of the original sprite. To fix this, we can use this block when I start as a clone. The blocks I attach under this will apply to any clones I create. I'll make the clone go to a random position. Where my X is somewhere between negative 200 and 200. And then my Y is between negative 180 and positive 180. So now when I click the green flag, I can see both my original sprite and clone. Next, I want more than just one clone. To make multiple clones, you can use the repeat loop block. And I want to make 30 clones, but you can put any number you want inside this input. And I don't want all the clones to appear at once. So I'll wait one second in between each clone appearance. So now I have multiple clones appearing at random spots across my screen. But how might you use cloning in a game, you may ask? Now I have one example where you can catch falling apples into a bowl to earn points. I set up the code for my bowl to move side to side with the left and right arrow keys and the score to change by one if touching an apple. I'm putting the score to show just like I did for my bowl. Now we will be building the cloning part or the apple code for the game. We can use what we've already learned about cloning to build the game, even these blocks we've already used for cloning the apple. Now instead of going to a completely random position, the X position will be kept at random, but the Y position will be 180 because we want all apples to start at the top random spot at the top of the screen before they fall. And then we need the apples to fall so we can continuously change Y by negative 10 and repeat this until it's touching the bowl. So we'll use the repeat until loop block. And then in sensing the touching bowl. Now we're gonna be using the last cloning block one we haven't used yet, the delete this clone block. So I'll drag it out, and which is as you can probably guess by the name, we'll delete your clone. So let's try it out. Seems to be working, but you see how all these apples are gathering at the bottom? And my original apple stays at its original position the entire time. To fix my original apple sprite, I need to make it hide at the beginning when the flag is clicked. And I need my clones to show. So I'm putting the hide under my when flag clicked, and then I'm putting show for when I start as a clone. This can be very useful knowledge when coding to get rid of the original sprite if it's unwanted. To fix the other problem we had that's about how the clones will gather at the bottom if I don't get rid of them, I need to delete them like the ones that touch the bowl. So instead of just touching the bowl to delete the clones, I'll have it so the clones remain until touching the bowl, or its Y position will be less than negative 180. So they'll delete when they get to the bottom of the screen, regardless of if they touch the bowl or not. Now let's run this code. Seems to be working. Now the game is playing like I want it to. You can try making this game on your own with different objects and see how many points you can get. Or you can create an entirely different project or game using the cloning blocks. To recap, the create clone block will create duplicate sprites of the sprite of your choosing. The when I start as a clone block will run any code you want that's specifically for your clones. And the delete this clone block will delete your clone. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned more about ways to use the three cloning blocks. Thank you for watching and keep on coding.